Hello, in this video we're going to create our validate class or at least get a good jump on it. Um, it might take us two videos to get through the validate class. But what we want to, what we want to be able to do is validate our form data um, easily and have many different options of validation. And so one thing though we need to clean up really quickly is if I uh, hit login and I put a username that doesn't exist, um, we get this invalid argument supplied for for each. And it says on model.php online 105. So if we go to model.php online 105, um, it's looking for each result. Now, result may not exist. And the reason that's happening is because on our find uh, method, we're doing a for each result query as a result. But on our find first, um, we're doing, uh, we're just taking that and we're populating object data we're running that method. And so we need to actually kind of wrap this um, in a for each or an if statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if, uh, if if result query then we want to run that populate object data method. And so now if I hit login uh, we don't, that user doesn't exist but we don't get that error. Um, so let's go on now. So that, that fixes the model problem we had there. And this is a very common thing to have to do when you're programming is to, um, you know, go back and fix things that you didn't think about uh, happening. For instance, that result query being empty when it gets to that uh, method. And so that is what causes bugs. And we're just going to kind of like debug this thing as we go. And I, I wanted to kind of leave this stuff in here so that while we're working on this, um, you can see the debugging process happen um, while we fix things. And so um, right now, we in the last video, we you know tested out this router redirect. So let's see if this works. What I want to do, um, what it looks like is going to happen is this router is going to redirect, and it's redirecting to nothing, so it should go to the home page. Um, so in the home page, right here on the index action, what I really want to do here is I'm just going to dump and die um, a dollar underscore session, okay? Because if we log in, there should be a session set, okay? And we should get redirected to this page. So let's go ahead now and test. Um, let's test that really quick. I'm going to put the correct uh, the correct credentials here. And hit login and you can see that it redirected us so our router redirect function is working correctly and if I dump and die dollar underscore session we can see that I have here a session set that is equal to my config so if we look here we can go to our core um, I'm sorry we can go to our config.php file and if you look at the current session name it's kwx FKJ. Um, so let's look back here. We have KWX FKJ. So that's correct. And then it's setting that equal to one, which if you look in our database ID one, so that user is logged in right now. Um, so that's a good thing. So let's go back now and um, close that. We know that that's all working as expected. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that dump and die. But what we want to do is work on uh, form validation. So let's get as far as we can in that class and we will uh, work on printing out errors and things like that if it doesn't exist. So um, what we're going to do is in our core I'm going to create a new file and I'll call it uh, validate.php okay and then we're going to open PHP tags and go ahead and set up our class All right, and right off the bat, I'm going to set some attributes. So I'm going to set private past. We're going to set that equal to false. Um, and then I'm going to set uh, errors equal to an empty array. And we'll set db equal to null. Okay. And then. Um, go ahead and run our construct so public function 
construct and we're set up this db is equal to db get instance Let's see that I do want to check something real quick okay yeah we set that as a camel case and not an underscore so there we go so this db get instance so all we're going to do on the construct is we're going to go ahead and grab our uh, database instance and we're going to set it here okay so then um, we're going to have a couple methods here this method is going to be fairly big and it's going to be our main method that we end up using most of the time. We're just going to call it check. Okay. So source, and then we're going to set items. Uh, we'll set that equal to an empty array. And then the first thing that we want to do in here is we always want to reset uh, this errors equal to an empty array. Because if there are any errors from last validate uh, running, uh, validation if it's on the same object which it should be um, it will store those in errors so we want to reset those at the beginning of the check okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to do a for each items as item rules okay so what's going to happen here is we're going to have um, we're going to pass in source will be like our post data so it'll be dollar underscore post will go here and then items is going to be a huge array that we build out for our form validation and so let's go ahead and um, look I think it'd be a good idea to go ahead and look at that um, what that's going to look like and it's going to be fairly simple on our on our login um, action so I'm going to go back to register in our login action, first thing we're going to do is we're going to set above this if statement, we're going to set validation equal to new validate. That's going to instantiate that object. And then um, here um, we got post and then we have validation true here. What we don't what we don't want to do here is we actually want to get rid of this valid validation equals true. And we want to do a validation check, okay? And um, the way we want this to look is this if statement here. We're going to say if validation passed, okay? So we'll, we'll create a passed method inside our validate object. And then that's how we'll check if, if validation passed. So the way this is going to look here is we'll pass in dollar underscore post right here is our first element. So when post data gets posted to this action, it's going to get put into this check method. The next thing we need is we need um, an array of all the things that we want to check. And so what this is going to look like is we're going to give it the name of the uh, post key, so it'd be username, and that'll be uh, an array. And then we'll also do the same thing for password. So our login is only going to have two fields. It's going to have username and it's going to have password. So inside of these arrays, um, these are our rules. Okay, so these are our items and these are our rules. So if we look back in the validate check here, we have items as item rules. Okay, so item would be username and rules are going to be the things we set in here that we want to validate. So let's start on that. The first thing that we're going to need is the display name. So we're going to call that display, and um, we this is for the message that's going to be passed back to the user. I want to set that to something that's you know I got an uppercase, and so sometimes we do things that we don't you know we call the field something. So we need a display name so that we can have a more friendly error passed back. And then for this, I'm just going to set required to true and this we haven't made any of this up yet so we're going to work on that inside of our validate but required is going to make sure it's not an empty that they actually put something in here okay so that's that's what we're doing here so required will be true 
And then um, for password, this is very simple. And we're gonna do the same exact thing for password. So we're gonna say um, display. We'll always need a display and that will be password. And then I'm gonna set required to true, okay? So that's all we're gonna do here for a validation check. Um, and then we're gonna make sure that passes. So basically we wanna make sure that they're giving us something here, okay? So what we're gonna do then is go back to our validate class and make, make this work. Okay, so here we go. Inside the for each loop here, we're going to, um, we're actually gonna sanitize our item. Okay, so what we're gonna say is item is going to be equal to input sanitize item. Okay. And then um, we're going to set our display. So display is going to be equal to rules. Display. So you remember when we passed in this display, that's what's going to set that up. OK? So then once we have that, um, we need to loop through all of our rules, OK? Um, we're going to say for each rules as rule um, rule value. Okay, so for each one of our rules, we're going to have a rule name, so it would be um, um, required, and the rule value would be true. Or we could set that to false, um, and so. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to say value is equal we're going to trim it so trim source item okay and then um, then what we're going to do is we're going to pass all of that into our input sanitize function so that it's sanitized. So now we have our value and then what we're going to do is start put, uh, putting together our rules. So um, we're going to say is if rule is equal to required and empty value. So then what we're going to do is we're going to say this, add error, which we haven't created yet, but we will. And then we're going to add an error here. And this error is just going to be an array, OK? And we're going to say display is Okay, and then for the second, we're gonna pass in item for the second element of this add error array. Okay, so we need um, an add error method. So let's jump out of this check real quick. We're gonna, we're gonna get more into that in a minute, but let's go ahead and um, create public function add error. Error. Okay, so this errors is equal to error. Okay, and we're going to say if empty this errors. We'll say if empty this errors, this passed is equal to true. Else we want to set 
this passed equal to false. So what's going to happen here is we're going to add the error. It's going to add it to this errors um, array that we set up when at the beginning of the class, uh, beginning of the object. And it's going to check if that's, it's going to add it first. Um, and then if it's if it's empty, if there's nothing in it, it's going to say this passed. So it's going to set this to true, um, this passed attribute. Else it's going to set it to false. So it's not passed. Okay? So we're going to come back to that in just a little bit. Um, but now let's jump back into our check method here. So we had our required here. And what I want to do is we want to say uh, else if not empty value. Okay. Then what we're going to do inside of here is a really big switch statement. Okay. So what we're going to switch on is rule. Okay. And we're going to have a bunch of different rules to set up. So let's just go through each one of these um, that we might want to use. So let's say case minimum. So we can use that later. Let me say case min. So if string length of value, okay, if that is less than our rule value, then we're going to add an error. So this add error, and that error will be display must be a minimum of, and then we can put rule value. And then we'll pass it. This is also going to be, sorry about this. It's actually going to be an array. And we'll pass item as the next element. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is break. Okay. And then we'll do another case. Max. Now this is going to be pretty much identical to the one before, so I'll just copy this, paste it, indent it here. Except we're going to change if the string length is greater than that, must be a maximum. All right, so that's super easy. Min and max.